Number 80. One method of analyzing amino acids is the Van Slyke method. The characteristic amino groups, which has the NH2 in it, in protein material are allowed to react with nitrous acid, which is HNO2, to form N2 gas. From the volume of the gas, the amount of amino acid can be determined. Now in this case, we have a 0.0604 gram sample of a biological sample containing glycine, which is CH2NH2COOH. And this was analyzed by the Van Slyke method and yielded 3.70 milliliters of N2 collected over water at a pressure of 735 torr and 29 degrees Celsius. What is the percentage of glycine in the sample? Okie dokie. So, basically, what the question's asking for is the last sentence, right? Yada, 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 yada. What is the percentage of glycine in the sample? So, we've done tons of percentage questions, right? Percent is just basically a part divided by a whole times 100. So now if we want to find out what the percentage of glycine is in the total sample, maybe I'll write the formula over here. If we want to find out that percent glycine, it would just be equal to something divided by something and then times 100. Now if we're looking for the glycine, the glycine has to be on the top, right? So glycine has to be on the top. And we want it out of the total sample. So the amount of the sample should be on the bottom. And maybe I'll put that in red. Now, let's see. Did they give us any of this information? Basically, we just need the two parts. And then we could, you know, find out the answer. Now, they did say that we had a 0 0.0604 gram sample. That's the total sample, right? And that sample, that whole sample contained glycine. So I know this bottom number. I know that the total sample is 0 0.0604 grams. All right, so we're halfway there. Do we know how much glycine is in there? If I scan the readings again, they don't tell me anything about glycine, right? They tell me that I have 3.70 milliliters of N2, and the pressure is at 735 torr with a 29 degrees Celsius. So basically... What we have to find first is we have to find out how many grams of the glycine. Now I say grams because the sample amount is in grams. So these units have to match. So let's just keep that in mind. All we got to do is just find out how many grams of glycine we have and then we can answer the problem. Now they give us a balanced equation. So the first thing is I'm just going to rewrite it just to make it a little bigger for myself. And generally when they give us a balanced equation, chances are we have to use it somehow. So we have CH2, NH2, CO2H, and this reacts with that nitrous acid, HNO2, and this will give us CH2OH, CO2H, and hold on a minute. I'm just going to see if I could maybe scooch this over a little bit, and then plus H2O, and then plus N2. And maybe, just because we're running out of room, and they did give me stuff about N2, I'm just going to put N2, maybe I'll put H2O here, and then I'll scooch this over, and then I'll say N2 right here, just so that I have room to work with. So N2 plus this plus H2O, that's everything on the uh, product side. Okay, now let's list what we're given. Well, we yielded 3.70 mils of N2. So we know information about this one, right? So we know that we have 3.70 mils of N2, and this was collected over water at a pressure of 735 torr and at a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. So I have a volume for N2, and then they're telling me that it corresponds with this pressure and temperature. So. Maybe I'll say that I have a volume of this. I have a uh, pressure of 735 torr. Remember, anytime that you see a torr value, that's a unit for pressure. And then my temperature is 29 degrees Celsius. Okie dokie. Now remember, we still want to find out the grams of glycine. And the glycine, they told us, was this compound here. 
So in this balanced equation, which one is the glycine? Yeah, it's this one right here, right? They did say it a little bit differently. You see how the ending over here is COOH, and then they said CO2H, but this is the same thing as saying COO. There's the two O's and then H. So all we have to do is basically find out the grams of this. Okay. Well, since they give me more information about N2, chances are I'm going to use it, right? Now, going back to the question, they did say that 3.70 milliliters of N2 was collected over water. This type of notation, when you have a compound that's collected over water, that means that you have two compounds or two different things in your vessel. If you're having N2 collected over water, that means that you have two compounds, N2 and H2O. And when they say that something is collected over water, the pressure that they give you is the total pressure between what is the N2 and the H2O. So this pressure over here, 735 torr, is not just the N2. Since it was collected over water, this is the total pressure of the N2 and the H2. Uh, the H2O, right? So in this case, if I just divvy this up between the pressure of the N2 and the pressure of the H2O, since they only gave us the volume of the N2, the pressure that we're more interested in is finding out how much pressure of N2 there is. But how am I going to find that when they didn't tell us the pressure of H2O? Well, when they give you something that's collected over water, they give you a total pressure. Basically, there are standard values for what the pressure of the water will be if you know the temperature. And yes, we do know the temperature, 29 degrees Celsius. So there is going to be like a chart in your textbook that has different temperature values and pressures of water. Now, in this case, I went through the textbook and I found the amount that we have to take here. So that was something that we had to pull from either the textbook or if this was maybe a test or a quiz, hopefully this, um, this you know, piece of information would be given to you. So um, the piece of information is right here. And if we just look down here, and maybe if I just move this over here, right? At 29 degrees Celsius, the pressure of H2O is 30.0. So if we know that out of the 735 torr, that there is 30.0 torr going towards the 735, now we can figure out how much is divvied up for just the N2. So Calci's out, basically all we're doing is 735 minus 30, right? So 735 minus 30, I get 705. And that is the amount of pressure that we're going to use now. So we're not going to use the total pressure. We're going to use the pressure of the N2. Okay. So now maybe, you know, just keep that in mind. I won't erase it because I just want to show you that we did this work. So now let's see. Where can I go from here? Well, now I have a pressure of the N2. I have a volume of the N2 with the corresponding temperature. I got one pressure, one volume, one temperature. That's the ideal gas law, right? That's this one right here, right? PV equals NRT. And maybe I'll put this maybe in the middle here. Now remember, the R is the constant gas constant, right? It's 0 0.0821. The units of the gas constant is what locks all the other units into place. So this is uh, ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So that's why if we're using this, the pressure has to be in ATM. But now going back to the pressure, they gave it to us in TOR. So, oh boy, <laughs> we first have to convert what that pressure in TOR is into ATM, right? So how do I go from a TOR to an ATM? Well, remember, 1 ATM equals 760 TOR. So the easy way to go about this is if you're going from TOR to ATM, all you got to do is just divide by 760. 
If you were going backwards from ATM to TOR, you just times by 760. So 705 divided by 760. And now in this case, um, it's not the final answer. So give yourself more uh, sig figs than necessary. I'm just going to move this down here. And let's see. I have 0 0.92763. Nine two seven six three. That should be good enough for rounding purposes. And that's ATM of the N2. So that's my new pressure that I'm going to use. So perfect. I now have the pressure. The volume, if we use a volume, that has to be in liters. Oh boy. This is like a converting game right here, right? They gave this to us in milliliters. So I have to convert from mils to liters. So I'll do that maybe over here. But we know how to do that, right? Just take the decimal, move it to the right, uh, the left three spots, right? Or you can divide by 1,000. So it would be 0 0.00370. Okay. 0 0.00370. So I have that. Now the N value, they didn't give me, right? It didn't tell me how many moles I have, right? And remember, N is the moles. I do have an R value. And remember, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Another conversion. <laughs> oh my goodness, this one is just... Well, I think this one is the last one out of the, the gas stoichiometry one. So they, they got to make it extra tricky. So let's just convert to Kelvin, right? All we got to do is just plus 273. So 29 plus 273 is 302 Kelvin. And now I have my temperature. Let's use all of that information that we just, you know, uh, converted. And we're just going to solve for N. So maybe I'll do that over. Actually, I'm going to do it over here. Let's see. Beautiful. So PV equals NRT. Pressure is the new one, 0.92763 times by the volume which we found out was to be 0 0.00370. And that equals to, I'm going to say it as X, but that's the N value, right? Times by the R value, which is 0 0.0821, and then times by the temp, which was 302. Looks like all we're going to have to do is just divide on both sides by the R and the T, because you want X to be by itself. So if I just divide by 0 0.0821 on both sides, and then the same thing for the temp, which is 302. 302. Okay. So the R's cancel out, the temperatures cancel out, and we're left with X, which is the moles. Let's see what we get. 0. 0.92763 times 0 0.0337, nope, 0 0.0037, divided by 0 0.0821, divided by 302. And this is still not the final answer, so leave yourself more sig figs than necessary. So 1.3843 times 10 to the negative fourth, um, and that's moles moles of N2. Okie dokie. So now, since we're kind of running out of room a little bit here, what I'm going to say is pause the video if you need to, but the only thing that I basically need is this information right now. So all of this that we had to convert and use, that's going bye-bye. We don't need this anymore. So I'm just trying to clean this up. So just pause it if you need to write it down, but it's going, unfortunately. This is also going. Okay. So now, basically, from here, we found out that we had one, and maybe I'll write this in red, 1.3843 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of N2. Oh, look, I now have moles of N2. I can go from one compound to another using the balanced equation, right? That's going, you know, a couple of chapters back. That's just regular stoichiometry. So I can take my 1.3843 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that's now moles 
of the N2, and I want to convert into grams of the glycine, CH2, NH2, CO2H. But remember, if we want to convert from one compound to another, both units have to be in moles. So the first thing is I got to go from moles of N2 to moles of CH2, NH2, CO2H. And then from there, I could go get my grams. So let's go for it. 1.3843 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of N2 times by that ratio. Throw the unit that you don't want on the bottom. So moles of N2 is going on the bottom. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to put moles of glycine. Right? This whole thing is glycine. So now I just go back to the, the balanced equation, right? But for both of them, there was no number in the front. There was no number here, and there was no number here. Remember, that just means that you have one of each. So I have one mole of glycine for every one mole of N2. The N2s cancel out. And now, times by the ratio, we're almost there. We just need to get the grams. So moles of glycine on the bottom grams of glycine up on the top. This is the periodic table. Gram to mole conversion of the same thing as periodic table, and there's always one mole, and then the mass, whatever you get on the periodic table, that goes with the grams. So periodic table out, and let's see. I'm just going to use this one. So I have, let's see, 12.01 plus 2 times 1.008 plus I got one nitrogen, so that's 14.01. I have two more uh, hydrogen, so two times 1.008, plus I got another carbon, 12.01, plus 32, plus one last hydrogen. So my molar mass for glycine is roughly 75.07. Cancel out the moles of glycine, and now we come to our grams of glycine. 1.384, 1.3843 times 10 to the negative fourth times 75.07. And once again, this still is not the final answer. So give yourself a little bit more sig figs than necessary. So 0 0.010392, and that's now grams of glycine. Okay. We're almost there because what was the point here? Why did we have to find out the grams of glycine? Oh, we needed to find out the grams of glycine to get the percent, right? What's the percent of glycine? So now we finally found it. The grams of glycine is 0 0.010392. So maybe if I just do the math over here in this corner, the percent would be something over something times 100, it would be the grams of glycine that we just found, 0 0.010392 divided by the grams of the whole sample, 0 0.0604, and now we found our answer. So the percent glycine would be, let's see, 0 0.010392 divided by 0 0.0604 times 100. And now I'm looking for sig figs. I see three. So I'm going to cap it at three. I'm just going to pull this over here. And the percent glycine is 17.2%. Woohoo! There you go. And that is the end of the question. Super, super long one, but hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys are doing well out there um, and that you're studying hard. And I, you know, good luck to you on your future tests and quizzes. And if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. It'll mean the world to both my brother and myself. And thank you so much. We appreciate you all. You guys have been great throughout this whole journey. And let's keep learning. All right. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.